Bring it on. Hello, everyone. My name is Tyler Levesque, and I'm the coordinator of esports here at Wichita State University. And we're back with another episode of the Wichita State Esports Podcast. And once again, I know I say this every single week, but I'm extremely excited for the guest that I have here uh, with me today. And uh, I'm going to let John go ahead and introduce himself. Hello, my name is uh, John Lee. I'm the director of campus recreation. I've been working here for 26 years. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. And I think uh, today I'm, I'm excited to have John here to kind of outline and, and explain um, what campus recreation is, how campus recreation has evolved over the duration of his time working at Wichita State and go into how esports and campus rec kind of started to merge and, and fit together. So uh, John, I guess one of the first questions that I have for you is, uh, when did you take this job? Uh, when was the kind of the first day? And what did that first day on the job look like? Well, um, the first day was 1991, and I was a GA, graduate assistant, and I got lucky enough to be promoted to intramural sports. So I did intramural sports. And what was the first day like? Uh, just finding where the restroom was and where the building, what the building looked like and, and meeting people and, and stuff like that. Um, but I did it in real sports and um, getting involved with students. And, uh, you know, from there, yeah, I did it in real sports for about uh, 10, 12 years and then went into facilities. And, you know, from there I um, got promoted. And about three years ago, I became the director of campus recreation. So. So I know you actually teach a couple courses uh, for the sport management department yeah. as well. So can you go into kind of describing those courses and how long have you taught those classes? I teach one class, sport facility management. I teach it in the fall and the spring. I've taught it since 2000, so 19 years. Um, it talks a lot about um, if you run a facility, um, what are the things you have to think about, uh, whether, whether it be events or facilities or maintenance issues and uh, try to give you people real world experience of if you ran a facility, what are the things you have to think about? So um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fun class and um, it's um, also been very rewarding and got to meet a lot of students that way. So, so was uh, campus recreation, IM sports, was that something, a topic that you always wanted to, to work in or was that kind of just gradually the process that, that happened or? Well, I was, um, when I was really young, I liked to officiate uh, baseball particularly and um, so when I got to college, um, I got involved with the intramural sports program and didn't know that was even a job. And, um, and I got it just because of a paycheck I could make. And I got more and more involved. And over the course of four years, I got to uh, um, realize that's something that I have a passion for. And I found out um, a roadmap of how I could get to where I wanted to be, which was to go to grad school. And that took me to Wichita State because they have a sports management program and got that degree here and, and got lucky enough to stay. And, um, you know, here all these years later, I'm still here. So Yeah. So just so people kind of understand why we're having this conversation today, um, campus recreation is a pivotal part to the success of esports. And so over the duration of this first year, esports on campus, especially at the varsity level, has kind of been trying to find its, its foothold in terms of where we belong. And so... Um, my office now actually is located in the Heskett Center, and so from day one, Campus Recreation and John Lee and his staff have been pivotal to the kind of progress and growth that we've seen for, for esports here on campus. And so it's kind of given students who might not necessarily um, go to the Heskett Center as often and do maybe more of the traditional sport uh, type activities, uh, they're start, you're starting to see maybe more of that demographic of students start to go into the Heskett Center because of the eSport opportunities that you would, that are now offered. So this conversation is going to be more kind of leading up towards how campus recreation and eSports kind of came together and kind of where we are today. So one of the first um, questions, especially about campus rec here on campus, is uh, when you first started here, um, what was the climate like for campus rec in terms of uh, what were the sports offered, uh, what were the activities that you could do, and how, is that, how have you seen that change over, over the years, or has it changed? Well, if you look at the way the Heskett Center was built, campus recreation was a lot about playing basketball, going swimming, tennis. It was a lot of team sports and dual sports. And through the years, uh, that transitioned into more individual uh, things, fitness particularly. And so we brought in more Group X programs like Zumba and Cycle Fit and those type of programs. And we also have cardio equipment and, and weights. So. Again, the Heskett Center um, 
can kind of marks the time the way it looks. Um, and uh, in any sports profession and, and campus recreation, you're always looking for the latest trends and seeing what's out there and seeing what's a fad versus what, what will stick. And um, we've always done that and we've always added new programs and, um, you know, sports have evolved from traditional intramural sports that still are here like basketball, flag football, softball, two more um, unique events. We have a Quidditch team, you know, the Harry Potter game. And yeah, so yeah. That, uh, that's fun. Um, we've, we've had ice hockey teams. Um, we have a canoe battleship where you're supposed to sink of somebody else's um, canoe in the, our Heskett pool. So there's a lot more diversity in, in sports. And, you know, Wichita State's a very diverse university. And so we also have to program to everybody who wants to be here. So we have badminton and cricket. And we're always looking out for the thing that's popular today and we think will be popular tomorrow. So, so in terms of campus rec, can you take me kind of on a day-to-day on a -day of a, what's, what's a day-to-day -day for, for John Lee? Um, well, first of all, I manage about eight people, um, full-time people. Um, we have over 150 students, um, depending on the time of year. And um, so it's managing all these people and the budgets and the programs. And my, my goal is to make every one of these programs successful. Um, and you need to do that um, through your budget and through hiring the right people and giving them the tools to be successful. So um, th that's a lot of day-to-day. -day. Um, at the director's level, um, it's a lot of meetings, uh, meeting with people higher than me, lead, meeting with uh, people who are my direct reports, coming up with strategic plans to see where we want to be. And eSports was part of that, um, you know, a year or two ago. And um, so it's just you're the overall director versus the, uh, figuring out the direction of where you want to go versus when I did it in Merle Sports, I was just about programming and hiring officials and just doing that specific task. So it's a more broad thing. So, so this is going to be kind of interesting. Yeah. I want to see if you can kind of take me kind of a trip down memory lane here. When you first took the job and started working in the Heskett Center kind of to, to now, can you remember those tangible changes to the Heskett Center from, from here to now? I know we've read on the front desk and I know we've uh, made adjustments to um, different parts of the Heskett Center over the years. Can you, are, like from, from when you first took the job to now, can you remember that well, kind this, of progression? Yes, it's going to date me. Um, <laughs> But uh, the internet didn't exist when I first started here. Computers were a black and white Macintosh. Um, and so it's totally changed uh, everything we've done. When you're here day to day, you don't kind of notice those gigantic changes. But you know, they, when you look back, um, the way we do business is a lot different. We get information a lot quicker. Email wasn't a thing. So um, yeah, and so the Heskett Center, um, it's an older building. It's 1983. It's been upgraded, and we've tried to keep that up um, today to s the best we can. Um, but it's really the the communication tools and the the things that were, that are available now that have really changed the most. And um, you know, everything's online to sign up for programs where people had to go to meetings before, and and so it's changed a whole lot. So this this might be kind of an interesting question, yeah. but do you remember how how did students actually check in? before, you know, you had the, just swiping a card or something. They, you, you would get a student ID card, and they used to put a sticker on the back for the semester. If So if it was spring semester, it might be a purple sticker. In the fall, it was green, and the next year it would be yellow. And, mm -hmm. and so you just flashed your photo and then turned it over, and somebody sitting at an ID checking stand would just wave you on in nice. so, yeah. versus swiping in and checking your credentials is the way we do now. So. Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on this a little bit. So the new YMCA facility has been yeah. built. Can you kind of walk us through maybe that process, the Heskett Center, any involvement, if any, and then talk about how the two are either going to work together, the, maybe the differences between the two? Absolutely. I feel like for the first time, Wichita State will have a full recreation program on campus. The Heskett Center was built, like I said, with uh, team sports and dual sports um, as a, at its core. We put in a weight room, we put in a cardio room, but they were shoved in spaces that weren't designed for their purpose. So it's been a, des a desire for a number of years to either expand Heskett or get somewhere on campus with the YMCA. So with the YMCA coming, 
um, they are going to have cardio, weights, group X programs, uh, two small basketball courts. Um, and with campus recreation, we run the, we'll run the intramural sports, the sport clubs, um, the facility itself still, because we have five basketball courts and a 25 meter by 25 yard pool. We also have the play fields that are on, uh, at the Metroplex. We also have um, six tennis courts, um, two of which we've converted into futsal soccer. Downtown, we have a boathouse that we run um, that um, houses the boathouse, uh, the, the rowing team, and also uh, uh, you can rent um, paddle boards and stuff in the summer to make a little extra money that way too. So campus recreation is more than the Heskett Center, and the YMCA and us together will give students at Wichita State the option to do so many different things and so many different programs and find that thing that's unique um, uh, to both of us. Um, and um, we are working very closely with the, the YMCA. Um, I work very closely with the director, whose name is George, and, and, um, and we talk frequently. And um, I think it's a great relationship. And um, I just think exciting times are coming in the, rec the recreational world at Wichita State. Yeah, I know for me it's been very, very cool to see the, the, the YMCA and it's been built over the span of the past year or so. And I know yeah. it's been very interesting to see that kind of progress and how the Heskett Center has also evolved with that during that time as well. Uh, can you also take me through the, uh, the, front, the front desk project as well? I know we just redid the whole front of the Heskett Center, uh, what the timeline was that for like, or what, what that timeline was like and what it looks like now. Um, so pretty much the first day I took over director, that was one of the projects I wanted to get done. Uh, the Heskett Center, um, being built in 83, was getting dated, and particularly the front entrance, and you know, your first impressions is always a big um, way you might think about a building or a person. So we wanted to, to re remodel it, and um, it probably took all, it's taken about all three years since I've been director to get it accomplished. Um, and uh, the goal was, when the Hess Center was built, again, the technology just wasn't around. It didn't need to be as big. Now we needed more space uh, for technology and computers and cash registers and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, it also allowed us in slower times to centralize our equipment checkout. If you look at any new recreation facility, it's all housed out of one area. All the, the checkout, memberships, um, swiping in to just use the Heskett Center. So when it's slower, we can have just one person. But if it's busier, we can have two or three. Um, and so it's a, a better centralized area. It helps us save us some money then on slower times as well. Um, also, when people come into Heskett Center and it's a student service building, I think it gives a great first impression. Um, we added you know, new lights and the, the, the countertops and a uh, color scheme. And, and we also uh, painted the hallway just past the front entrance to, um, you know, kind of to make it more, you know, 2019 versus 1983. So, um, so we're excited about it, and it's already it's people have said very positive things, and we're utilizing every bit of the space that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, what I can say, if you're a WSU student and you haven't been in the Heskett Center lately, that might put you at about a year or so at this point. You need to go in and check it out. It looks fantastic. John Lee's crushed it, and I know that they're going to continue to do a great job. And I think the new eSports Hub is a reflection of kind of the evolution of the, of the Heskett Center over the years. And so one of the first questions I have now about campus recreation and kind of eSports starting to kind of come together is when was, when was the first time eSports was really on your radar. Do you remember that time? Yeah, it was probably two years ago. Time just goes by so quickly, so I always forget a little bit. Um, um, my boss, Dr. Terry Hall, mentioned it, and we were about ready to do some preliminary drawings uh, that you do with architectural groups where you just get a cost. Mm -hmm. You pay a little bit of money. It's not the main architectural drawings. You get some concepts. And we were doing um, a, a few other projects, and we just threw this one in and uh, just to see what it would cost and, um, and then just start the conversation. And that, so that was more than two years ago. And when it came back, it was way more than I thought it would be, to be honest. Um, but since then, um, you know, we got rid of some ideas of 
having offices in there and some other things that happened. So that was the first initial about two years ago. And, um, and that also allowed us to get all the right people in place. I know about recreation, and I know it's a big thing in campus recreations across the country nowadays. If people aren't doing it, they're at least talking about doing it. So it was on our radar in that sense too, but um, it was really uh, uh, that emphasis of getting the first drawings done and then talking to people, what kind of space do we need? And um, so that's how, it, that's how it started and, um, and uh, we're, we're off and running, I suppose. So I, I think I vaguely remember a conversation we had maybe six to eight months ago and you stayed, you go to a, a conference where other campus rec coordinators are at. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember any sort of conversations that you had with other campus rec directors that, that had esports programs and that they talked about their experience or any something yeah, like that? Yeah, it was, it was so brand new that the one or two people that, um, and the conference you're talking about is the NERSA conference um, that happens uh, throughout the United States each year in April typically. But there's just a couple people and I think one of them actually gave a, a presentation on it. And so we asked that, but it wasn't a ton. But there's a lot of buzz and conversation. Are you doing that? And if you did, where would you have it? And, um, and so, yeah, it's a, in, in fact, I was reading uh, an article yesterday uh, about esports and, and campus recreation um, and the, its value uh, on, in, in, a, in recreation or just somewhere on campus. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I know for me, one of the most interesting interesting experiences that I have is when a, uh, a student sends me an email, and you know, and we actually got an email the other day from a student who sent an email to Campus Recreation, and he was saying, "Hey, I have this interest in playing this yeah. specific gaming title for at Wichita State," and he actually sent it to Campus Recreation, and then he yeah. forwarded it on to me. Yeah. And so um, I know as the student body has started to uh, started to progress and grow and things like that, that I know students have uh, their interests have also yeah. you know grown as well, and so. Uh, I've seen any type of student that you can think of come in and inquire about some specific sort of gaming title, and I know that um, I know I do the programming for varsity-related um, games, and so that means yeah. I spend a lot more of my time with players that um, are playing for a purpose and they're playing to compete against other schools and, and things like that. But I know that we we work together to a certain extent to to put together the new esports hub, and so we're yeah. going to touch on that now. Yeah. Um, when you first started to see kind of the architectural renderings or drawings of the mm -hmm. space, what were your first initial kind of thoughts of the new space? Um, I, I thought the first thing we needed to do is get, now that we have something to talk about, all the right people in the room. Um, you know, you're down the hallway now from us in 107, mm -hmm. I believe, and that wasn't 100% decided. And that need, things like that had to be decided, because if you're gonna be in our room and, or different spaces, we had to figure out those logistics, because your setup affected what we were doing and vice versa. So I think as these decisions were made, then it made our room easier to decide what we wanted to be. And, um, and what we wanted to be is a space for, um, if the varsity team wants to have a, a competition in there, wonderful. Um, and um, I'm sure you can talk to that if that's, if that's something you'll do. We also have a sport club team, which isn't which is competitive, but not as maybe as competitive uh, as a varsity team, and you can uh, speak to that. But we also, campus recreation is about students, and it's about everyone. And when we program, it's our desire not to program to one student or one demographic. It's a space that everyone who's a Wichita State student can go in at no cost and, and game. As, and we plan to open the facility whenever our building hours are. Typically during the week, we're open from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., and so that's when the room's gonna be open um, for just the regular student who might have just a little interest in it and maybe grow or um, maybe do it once a semester and to the one that wants to come in you know, daily and, and things of that nature. So we wanted a space when we were designing it that was inviting for everyone and not just you know, the gamers on the varsity team. Um, and certainly we will we'll have that. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, you know, if we do some outreach to high schools and middle schools that those people can come on. So that's how we, we were thinking about the room and that's where the designs, you know, happen. And, um, you know, so, so from there, we really worked with an architect, told them our desires and, 
everybody was at the table and um, and then going things beyond my knowledge base is what speed that the that the Ethernet has to be at and, and what kind of computer we need and, and the even the, the keyboard and the mouse you just can't you know use the one you get from you know the place down the street you have to have special equipment and you know it took a lot of people to have their input to to get where we were and so um, you know and I think it turned out great mm -hmm. yeah I would definitely agree and I think for me um, just seeing the progress of the space in the, in the span of a year was, was super exciting because um, I can't tell you how many students that I have that just come into my office that are part of the Shocker Gaming Club that aren't necessarily a part of the varsity entity that I help run and yeah. I'm the faculty advisor to the club as well so I interact with those students very regularly and uh, what's very very exciting for students on campus and you already know this yeah. is that students are going to have the ability to play actual campus rec run competitions along yeah. with uh, the competitions that the Shocker Gaming Club students already compete in that are nationwide that colleges can play in and along with our varsity entity our varsity gamers going through and playing their tournaments in there as well. So um, students were looking for a home that played or that were interested in this on campus. And uh, I always like to say that my job is a, is a reaction to student interest because it is, uh, and because we have so many students that, that love to play, that love to play and they love to play at a high level. And so now you're gonna have students ranging from any sort of interest level that are just interested in playing casually or interested in playing at, at the highest level, yeah. uh, their needs can be met through this new facility along with my office. And so one thing that I really want to outline in this new room is these computers. They have Core i7 processors, 2060 RTX graphic cards, which is super exciting. There's state-of-the-art equipment in there. There's, the lighting in there is fantastic. The chairs in there are great to support for however long you want to sit in there, along with customized mouse pads. Uh, one of the important things that you need to know as well when you walk into the Heskett Center and you're a full-time student, and if you want to access the room, is you'll swipe your card in, and you'll be able to check out a mouse and keyboard as well to play on that station so you don't necessarily even have to have your own peripherals to play at that station you can check that out as, as be, just being a student uh, so right now you see that uh, the room that's set up initially it has all the equipment laid out that won't necessarily be the structure that's more for aesthetics just to see everything kind of put together and running uh, efficiently but we're starting to come up with the official announcement will we say November 5th Correct. 12, 12 to 5. Okay. That's the official announcement of us opening up the room. And I can tell you students are fiending. They're in my office and they are just ready to, to, ready to get in there and play. So uh, one little anecdote that I, I do kind of want to touch on real quick is the artwork that you see in the room. Um, I helped kind of with the, with the specs of the computers and the peripherals and, and all those things, the mouse pads and the chairs and the tables. John Lee went through and he ordered all those things. But the artwork, that was all John. Uh, and so that's, that's very interesting to me because your background isn't necessarily in this at all. No. But um, there's some really cool pieces of artwork in there. So maybe if you can talk about that process real quick. It's kind of funny to me. Well, the, well, the architects decided, and there was an interior decorator kind of person involved, decided to paint some unique colors in the room. And the, but the walls itself are on the ceiling are the unique colors. But the walls are gray. And I felt like we needed something to pop those colors. Um, and why I'm not mystery gamer, um, um, if that's an adjective. Uh, um, yeah, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> At this point, I've heard, what I, I've, heard, I've heard it all, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I felt like we needed more color in the room. And so I just sat at home one night and just looked online for um, different types of um, art pieces and whatever. And I came across the stuff we found. I knew the games. You had told me the games that we were planning. Um, so I just chose out of those that menu, and I was really looking more for color than I was for the actual picture on the wall. So, um, so there's some oranges and greens and blues. Um, most of them are Overwatch. I think one's League of Legends, um, but it wasn't like the more of the choice is what the colors were in the picture, and you know, and they're canvas pieces of art that are um, either in four or five little sections. So it turned out pretty cool, and I um, one of the things. You know, two things about it. We, we, I felt like we spared no expense on the computer equipment and the, the peripherals and the two TVs in there and, and, and a lot of other things. Oh, we talked about, we forgot to talk about AR. Yeah. Or the VR. Computer. Yeah. And so, you know, art pieces, people may not know this, they can be very expensive. And so these were a reasonable um, cost versus, you know, I didn't want to spend $10,000 on the wall. Um, but I wanted some colors, so that that was fun, and um, and I, I w we want it to be a fun space. 
There's also, since we'll get to the VR, there's also gonna be a little lounge area um, that sits in front of two TVs where you can, um, we'll have an Xbox and a PlayStation and things of that nature. And, or you can just hang out in there if you're not gaming, especially if you're between classes, we want it you to be a place you can hang out. And then um, we're also gonna have virtual reality. We're gonna have uh, um, at least four games to start with and people can check out that um, VR equipment and, and plug into a computer and, and people can see what they're doing on the screen behind them. Of course, they'll have the goggles on that, to have fun. So again, we want it to, this space is for the varsity team, is for the sport club team, but it's also just for anybody who just wants to um, get away from things. Campus recreation is about um, finding something for everybody. And some people find this a way of relaxing. You know, you, you have stressful days and um, sometimes just to get away and do something different um, can be important. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully we created a space that, that allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the last questions I kind of have on the space is throughout this whole process, um, is there anything about the space that um, you would like to have improved upon or are you completely satisfied with, with the new space? Well, well, a long time ago, I used to work at Disneyland and so I always remember what Walt Disney said, it's, you know, some, it will never be complete when he talks about Disneyland. And so the Esports Hub on Tuesday the 5th, I'm very proud where we're at, but I don't think that's the end. I, I, whether it's programming, I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna program it. I would like to have camps for middle school students and high school students during slower times at Wichita State. I haven't thought much how we're gonna do that yet, but um, we will. We're gonna have tons of tournaments and, and um, you know, uh, keeping our um, eyes and ears open, we're gonna try to, you know, if there's new games out there that we're not playing that everybody else is, you know, especially with your help, um, we will, uh, you know, gravitate towards those. And um, I think there could be other possibilities in the room, maybe even, um, you know, people that are in different parts of gaming that, we're, that I don't even know about could, could possibly do it. So it's, um, we're, we're very happy where we're at, um, and, but it's not, you know, Tuesday's not, we're not done and we're just gonna wash our hands of it. We're, we're going to make it a fun space, and and also we plan all the equipment will, um, you know, make sure that it's always up and running and, and going. So, well, I know for me, um, I will. I always like kind of. I have this saying where uh, we're kind of building the plane in the air. Yeah. And um, the first semester we really did that with my varsity program yeah. and the two teams that we had. Now we have four official gaming titles uh, that are varsity titles, and so. Uh, I, I, I'm going to kind of imagine that programming that space, you already have a template that you use yeah. for, for IM Sports to really program that space. Yeah. And, and gaming and us, utilizing that lab, you already know this, but it's, it's, not, it's not that different. Students sign up, they sign up for a tournament, yeah. students sign up, show up at an assigned time, and, and then they just actually get to play in the same room, which to me is super exciting. So um, students, November 5th, 12 to, 5. 12 to 5 is the official grand opening of the new eSports Hub. I'm so very excited, and, and once again, I can't stress um, how much um, input John Lee had and, and how successful this is going to be. Uh, without his leadership, this wouldn't have happened, so we're extremely thankful for his vision to accept eSports as a part of campus, cre campus recreation and, and to um, essentially give these students kind of a home on campus. So um, we're extremely thankful for that, and we're excited to kind of see where, where eSports continues to go and, and grow on campus. And, uh, start to have the varsity and the program and camps recreation and the gaming club and all the all the kids that are interested in gaming to whatever capacity really start to utilize this this space on campus which is the end goal yeah you know absolutely and i and i feel like especially with the varsity team even if you're um playing down the hallway uh, the sports hub could be a good place to watch the team play michigan or houston or mm -hmm. the other schools that you play and um and root on the shockers mm -hmm in the e-gaming world as well, so. Yeah, yeah. well, um, I don't have anything else. Yeah. John, I appreciate you coming by and, and, and taking your time to be on, our, on the podcast. Absolutely. And so I think this is some great information and for students to really understand uh, the evolution of campus recreation and, and who is really kind of behind all of the progress that you've seen here on campus over the years. So John, we're thankful that you stopped by. Thank you for stopping by for another episode of the WCU Esports Podcast and we'll see you next time.